but it launches straight up from your huge catapult and it's going up there and you're like, oh crap, it's going to hit me. And so you just watch it and you count. Let's see when it's going to hit you. That's the, the idea here, because we would all do that, naturally. Um, let's talk about a few things that we should know. Firstly, let's call our position function S. That's typical for a position function. So S of T, according to time. The initial height. What is the height of this thing at t equals zero, right when you launch? So s of zero is 16. Do you follow me on that? 16 feet. So right when it's launching, it's at 16 feet high because that's when it's letting go. What's the velocity? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's exactly right. Going positive 120 feet per second. Now, here's a good question for you. What is velocity in relation to a position function? It's the what? The what? Velocity. It is the first. Do you remember that's the first derivative? So velocity. Is the first derivative of a position function. And it said initial velocity. So the initial velocity would be this, the first derivative at time zero. Because what's going to happen to your projectile? Is it going to stay at 128 feet per second forever? No. no. Probably not because it's going to outer space. It's going to slow down immediately after you launch it out of the catapult, right? Gravity is going to affect it. We're not going to do wind resistance, but gravity is going to affect it. It's going to come up and then it's going to come down. True? So the initial velocity at time zero is 128 feet per second. I don't know if I spelled that right. I probably spelled it wrong. I'm not good at spelling. I think I have too many L's. Do I? Yeah. Acceleration. There we go. If you have acceleration like that, uh, what's acceleration? I didn't say anything about acceleration, but think outside the box here, or actually think outside the globe. No, we're very good. He, did you hear what he said? So it's going to be deaccelerating, decelerating. It's still a form of acceleration. It's just in the reverse direction. So you're going to be accelerating negatively because he's pulling it towards the ground. And he said 9.8 meters per second squared, which is true, but I'm talking about feet. Oh. So not 9.8. Do you know? 32? Yes. Accelerate. Now, oh, wait, another interesting question. What's acceleration as it relates to a position curve? Do you remember all this? Rates of change? Position function was a position. The first derivative gave you velocity. The second derivative gave you acceleration. So here's what we know. We know the second derivative Actually, that's going to be a constant. The second derivative is negative 32 feet per second squared. Why is it a constant? Well, gravity doesn't change for us. So it's going to be pulling down a constant acceleration of negative 32 feet per second squared. How many people feel okay with our setup here? I'm going to show you what to do with this next time. We'll start here. We're going to continue talking about our catapult problem, and here's what we knew so far. We're launching from a catapult, and as the projectile leaves, the arm reaches up and reaches the maximum height of 16 feet, and then let's go, and this thing shoots straight up in the air because you built it wrong. It's going to have fallen on the ground right in front of you. Got it? It leaves the catapult with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second. Now, what's going to happen as soon as it leaves the catapult? What happens to that projectile? Deceleration. It starts slowing down. That's right. The velocity starts slowing down because gravity is affecting it. Now, what our goals here are to do is find the position function. That's position according to time. Find the maximum height. We can do that. We already know how to find maximum and minimum. And we're going to find out when the projectile will hit the ground. These two, this is going to be based off our position function. The maximum height, we're probably going to have our first derivative for that. You with me on this? So what do we, what do we know initially with our problem? Well, we know that it's starting out at 16 feet. So I said it starts from a height of 16 feet. That's because our catapult arm reaches a height of 16 feet and then lets go. So the position at time equals zero 
isn't zero. It's 16. It's like a, it'd be like a pitcher throwing a ball. If the pitcher throws a ball, the ball doesn't start from zero, right? He's not going to go, oh, that'd be the worst pitcher ever. He's going to throw it from up here, right? It starts from like eight feet and then goes up. It's not going to start from the ground. Same thing with our catapult. So the position at zero is 16 feet. The first derivative gives us a velocity. So our initial velocity is 128 feet per second. That means that our initial velocity at zero, that, that's where we start right here, the velocity at zero has to be 128 feet per second. Right when it's leaving, it's traveling at 128 feet per second straight up. Are you guys okay with that? All right. Now, acceleration. How we came with the acceleration isn't magic. It's just something to do with the Earth's gravity. It says that acceleration is negative 32 feet per second squared. It means that gravity's pulling everything with that acceleration. If you drop something from here, it's, it's going to momentarily be at a velocity of zero, right? Right when I drop it. And then gravity's going to take its effect and start moving and speed up and speed up and speed up and speed up until it hits the ground. You follow me? And that acceleration that's acting on it is a constant negative 32 feet per second squared. That means that the velocity changes at 32 feet per second every second. So it drops, it's at, after one second it will be at negative 32 feet per second, then further and further and further and further and further. So do you see where we're getting all these numbers from? Now, the interesting thing is using just inf this information, we're going to actually be able to work backwards and get all this stuff that we want to find. So let's try to work on that. First thing, right now what we know is basically we only know the second derivative. Notice how this is s prime of 0 and s of 0. We don't have a position function. We just know something about the position at 0. We don't have a velocity function. We just know something about the velocity at 0, at time equals 0. Are you with me on this? What we do know is the acceleration function. That's all we know, as a matter of fact. So if we know that <coughs> we've got the second derivative, the acceleration function, in terms of t, can you explain to me how I could get maybe somewhere else besides that? Not taking a derivative, because that would give me a third derivative. I don't want that. But is there a way I can get from here to maybe one derivative higher. Yeah, better. If we integrate the second derivative, it must give us the first derivative. Does that make sense? Well, it's kind of an interesting concept, and that's going to work for us. So here's what we know. S prime of t is going to be the integral of S double prime of t. The first derivative is the integral of the second derivative. And of course, you need a dt. Are you OK with that one? All right. Now, why are we doing this again? Well, we don't have the velocity function. We just have the velocity at zero. So this is actually going to help us. Remember the initial value problems that we did earlier? This is basically what that is. So this says, all right, my first derivative is going to be the integral of whatever my second derivative was. In this case, it's just negative 32. Well, that's a pretty easy one. What's the integral of negative 32 dt? Can you tell me that? Negative 32 t plus c. t. Why not x? Because our variable is t. That says t. Might as well use t. Negative 32 t. Oh, wait. And, and you said what? F plus, c. plus Is a c important? Yes. yes. OK. You know, a, a student asked me today, why is the c? Why do you even need the c? And the, the answer is, well, if you take a derivative Let's say this and this and this. You don't have to write this down, just kind of watch right here. If you took a derivative of all these things, What's the derivative here? What's the derivative here? What's the derivative here? Now, if you take the integral of each one of these, these are all the same, right? If you take the integral of all these things, you're still going to, you're going to get this. Right? 
right? Is it necessarily this one? No, I know that all three of these came from three different sources. So I can't take the integral of this and get one thing back again. It has to represent all of them. How we represent all of them is there could be a constant over there. That's where the plus C is coming from. That's why we have that. So anyway, we certainly do need the plus C here. So good catch on that. Now, tell me something I can do. Someone on the right-hand side of the room. Since we have S prime of T equals negative 32T plus C, tell me what I can do now. Okay, so initial velocity, hey, I have that. It says S prime of zero equals 128. Where does the zero go? Where's the zero go? That, that, that stands for T, right? So S prime of T or S prime of zero says, I know the first derivative equaled 128 when the T equals zero. Does that make sense to you? Are you sure? S prime of 0 equal 128, right? So S prime of 0, the 0 meant the T, the 128 was the velocity at 0. This means the velocity, this means the velocity at 0, that's 128. Can you solve for C? Mm -hmm. yeah, this one's really nice, how much is C? Okay. So with a little substitution, we have the S prime of T, is negative 32 t plus 128. Which you have to feel okay with that so far? We now have a velocity function. It says velocity at any time t. <clears throat> now here's something interesting. Which question can we answer right now? The first one, the second one, the third one. Can we answer the position function yet? We don't have that on the board. Can we answer the maximum height yet? Mm -hmm. Kind of, almost, almost. We can get close to this one. We'll talk about that in a minute, but we're very close to this. Why? Where would a maximum occur? When the slope is zero, do we have a formula for the slope? Yes. We do. It's right there. That's the slope, right? So when the, think about that. Oh, I broke my pen. State. No, I can Just recap, last time. <laughs> when the catapult goes up and it stops, that would be where the velocity would equal zero, right? Then it's going to start moving negatively. So right where the velocity equals zero is where we should have maximum, or in other words, where the slope of the tangent line uh, the, is zero. It's going to reach its peak and come back down. So that's going to be what we're going to be using in just a bit. Now, before we can actually find the maximum height, though, because we get to have to plug that number in, we need to figure out the position function right after that. So, let's go ahead and do that next part. If we know S prime of t, is there a way you can figure out S of t? Our same, our same basic idea. s of t equals the integral of s prime of t. An integral will undo that derivative. So in order to go from our first derivative back to a position function, let's just take an integral of it. 